Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney and I received an email from a friend of the channel, David. Oh, let me see. Back in April, April 16th to be exact. And it was actually an article about uh, women in leadership roles in law firms. And I will link that article down below. Uh, and that article that David sent is is does an admirable job kind of making the case as to why it's so important for women to be in leadership roles in law firms. And listen, I think that's a no-brainer. I think that's obvious. But that being said, I could be wrong because it's it's a real issue in our industry. We have um, very few women in roles of leadership in the plaintiff community, at least in New York State and across most of the country. I've seen a real dearth as well. Um, there's just not enough women in these roles. And let's think about it for a second. It is not ideal. It is just not ideal. If you've been the victim of sexual harassment and you you call up 10 attorneys and nine of them are men, and then you got to meet with some of these attorneys and you, you come in and you meet with a couple of attorneys, you meet with me, you meet with a couple other guys, and every attorney you meet with um, looks like the problem, right? You got a bunch of heterosexual, Caucasian, cisgender males. And that's not to say we're all villains. I, I hope I'm not, right? But that being said, I should be aware, I should spend time thinking about the fact that um, a woman who's been through a fraught, difficult sexual harassment experience, she might not want to sit down in a conference room with a closed door with me. She might not want to. And there should be options for her to feel comfortable and those options are going to require women in leadership roles, women in powerful roles, right? So that's always something that I've tried to invest in. Um, and I think David's article that he links, which I'm linking down below, has real value. I think JD Super did a great job with it. But we need to do more. So I kind of make the point like, yeah, listen, it might be a no-brainer. Obviously, women should be in leadership roles in law firms. But it's not happening, or at least it's not happening fast enough. So it's worth having additional conversations to say, um, more of this, less of not this, right? Like this, this needs to happen. We need to be investing in this. We need to be making this happen. And um, when we fall short, it is not just, oh, well, maybe next year. It, it is legitimately a tragedy when we fall short and, and we don't have... Um, a diverse population in leadership roles in the fields that deal with discrimination, in the fields that deal with sexual harassment. There should always be options from protected classes. There should be minority options that people can go to and feel comfortable with if they just don't want, if they don't want to work with uh, Pinky, you know? I mean, I'm so white, I'm pink. I get it. Like, it's, I'm not always going to be the best option. And that's okay. And listen, somebody's gonna be like, oh, that's racist. Yo, why should somebody care about the race of their attorney or the gender of their attorney? Well, because listen, do I, do I think that should be a determining factor? Ideally, no. But if you're being persecuted by a bunch of white people, or if you're a woman who's being sexually harassed by some guy, I get that there, there might, you might not want more of the same. Not that I would do the same things, but I might look like the guy. I might, just remind you of the guy. You just might not feel comfortable. And again, that there has to be options. There has to be options. And those options, those women, those those people of color, those people with protected classes, whatever it is, whoever it is, they need to be in leadership roles and they need to have the ability to say, I believe in your case. I want to help you. That's important, right? I'm not, listen, it doesn't have to be the managing partner, right? Like, that would be great and that should happen and that should often be the case. But like the main thing that we need right now is people who are looking at cases need to be able to empathize and feel what their potential clients feel when they're making the decision, do I help this person or not? Right? I don't really know how someone feels when they're experiencing racial discrimination. I can't. You can say, oh, well, you've been discriminated against because you're white. Maybe, probably not. And, and also, like, in the scheme of things, it would be so minor, it wouldn't feel the same. Because, frankly, white people don't really experience that 
Um, hardly ever. So if it did happen, it would be just kind of surprising. And it wouldn't feel the same as someone who experiences it every single day of their life, right? Uh, but anyways, I'm on a tangent. I thought it was a great article. I wanted to post it. And I somehow made an article post video that went five minutes. So I apologize for that. I'm way too wordy. And uh, David, thank you for the article. Thank you for sharing. I'm sorry it took me almost exactly a month to get it uh, posted, I guess. But I thought it had real, real value and I wanted to share it. Thank you.